Picture this, a wooden ship slicing through the ocean centuries ago, no engine humming beneath the deck, no GPS blinking directions, just wind, rope, and cloth, and yet it moves with purpose. But here's the strange part. Some sails are tall and triangular, others wide and square. If wind is just wind, why didn't sailors settle on one shape and call it a day? That simple question opens the door to thousands of years of trial, error, storms, trade routes, and clever human problem solving. As ships crossed rivers, hugged coastlines, and dared the open ocean, sail shapes quietly evolved with them. Let's find out together as we unravel the answer to that very question. Why are sails triangular or square woven into the fabric of maritime history? Right here on History of Simple Things. At first glance, wind seems straightforward. It blows, it fills a sail, and a ship moves forward. But sailors learned early on that wind is unpredictable. It changes direction, speed, and intensity, sometimes in minutes. The shape of a sail determines how a ship reacts to all of that. Square sails, the earliest and most visually iconic, work best when the wind comes from behind. When the wind pushes directly into a broad, flat surface, it's like someone shoving the ship forward with invisible hands. This made square sails perfect for long journeys where prevailing winds were reliable, such as crossing open seas along established routes. Triangular sails, on the other hand, tell a different story. They aren't just pushed by the wind, they interact with it. Their shape allows wind to flow along the surface, creating lift, much like an airplane wing. That lift lets ships move, even when the wind isn't coming from behind, unlocking entirely new possibilities for navigation. Square sails dominate the earliest chapters of sailing history. Ancient Egyptians used them to move along the Nile, where the current flowed north and the wind conveniently blew south. It was a perfect partnership between river, wind, and sail shape. As maritime civilizations expanded, square sails followed. Phoenicians, Greeks, and later the Vikings relied on them to cross seas and trade over long distances. These sails were simple to make, easy to repair, and incredibly powerful when the wind was favorable. But square sails came with limitations. Steering against the wind was difficult, often impossible. Ships had to zigzag or wait patiently for conditions to change. Exploration progressed, but it did so at the mercy of weather patterns. The square sail was dependable, but it demanded cooperation from nature. The triangular sail, commonly called the lateen sail, emerged from regions where sailing conditions were far more complex. In the Mediterranean and Indian Ocean, winds shifted frequently, coastlines were tight, and harbors were crowded. Sailors needed precision, not just power. Triangular sails provided exactly that. Their angled shape allowed ships to sail into the wind by tacking, moving forward in a zigzag pattern. This wasn't obvious at first. It took generations of observation and experimentation to realize that sails didn't have to be pushed by wind. They could harness it sideways. This innovation transformed sailing from a passive activity into an active skill. Navigation became about reading the wind, adjusting angles, and making choices. With triangular sails, ships could explore farther, return more reliably, and maneuver through narrow waters with confidence. Why didn't everyone just switch to triangular sails? Because geography plays favorites. In open oceans with steady winds, square sails remained unbeatable. They were efficient, stable, and excellent for carrying heavy cargo. Large empires and trading powers continued to rely on them for centuries. Meanwhile, triangular sails thrived in regions with unpredictable winds and busy coastlines. Arab sailors perfected them on dhows, 
Mediterranean traders refined them for speed and control. Different environments demanded different solutions and sail shapes evolved accordingly. Rather than one design replacing the other, both survived by excelling at different tasks. The sea didn't reward one-size-fits-all thinking, it rewarded adaptability. Eventually, shipbuilders realized they didn't have to choose. Why not use both? Hybrid rigging became common during the age of exploration. Massive square sails provided raw power for long journeys, while smaller triangular sails offered control and steering precision. Ships like caravels and galleons became floating compromises, designed to survive open oceans and still maneuver near unfamiliar coasts. This combination played a crucial role in global exploration. It allowed sailors to sail farther, faster, and with a higher chance of making it home. Entire continents became connected not by engines or maps, but by clever sail geometry. What makes this story remarkable is how subtle the innovation is. No single inventor stood up and announced a revolutionary sail shape. Instead, knowledge passed quietly from sailor to sailor, port to port. Small adjustments mattered. A slight change in angle, a different rope configuration, a new way to raise or lower cloth. Over time, these tweaks accumulated into distinct sail designs that reflected deep understanding of physics. Long before the science had formal names, square sails embrace brute force, triangular sails embrace finesse. Together they represent two philosophies of working with nature, accepting its push or shaping its flow. So the next time you see a sail slicing across the horizon, whether it's broad and square or sharp and triangular, you're looking at history in motion. You're seeing decisions made by countless sailors who learned, sometimes the hard way, how to work with the wind rather than fight it. Square sails remind us of humanity's earliest attempts to harness nature's strength. Triangular sails show how observation and clever design turned limitation into opportunity. Together, they tell the story of how something as simple as cloth and wind helped connect the world. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.